For fuck's sake, these two idiots relish the past Volkov and Zayden Kibo are getting married. Today was finally the day, the day of Rock Nation Volkov's Winterfest baby shower and gender reveal, hosted by her brother Edward and his wife Hilary at their new San Sequoia home. Hilary really went all out for this shower, she wanted this occasion, one surrounded by the entire family, to feel magical. She wanted to make sure this would be a day that Reddit and Zayden would never forget. Edward and Hilary were the only ones in attendance to dress in white. Along with the Volkov Kiloha family, the first family to arrive to the function was the Vitals, who weren't the least bit shy to show off how happily married they were. Zayden and his brothers, Dexter and Voldemar Kibo, arrived shortly after, along with the Volkov Meshram family, who had a surprise to share with everyone. Ezra and Mason had kids of their own, to in science babies. Ezra and Mason went around to all of their family members to introduce their infant sons, Jacques and Alexander Mashram, for the very first time. Everybody was shocked, but thrilled, especially Autumn, seeing her family continue to grow and all of the cousins her children had made her want to cry. Chuck Meshram, however, just felt like crying. This must be Ezra's revenge for Sage not liking him, though most members of the Volkov, Kialoha, Vitor, Meshram, and Kibo families were anxious and in high spirits to find out if reference stated here and Zayden were welcoming their first son or daughter into the world. There was one sim in particular who was trying their best to distract themselves from a burning question they had for the expecting mother, a question with a possibly terrible terrifying answer, but they couldn't do anything about that now. The party had officially begun, everybody heading to Edward's and Hilary's backyard for food, fun, drinks, and color-coded sunglasses. Sage was having a blast getting to know his cousin Micah better. Nina, who would be aging up to a teenager the following day, spent her time blowing bubbles. Mason was still introducing Alexander while the Vitors conversed with the Kibos, and the twins, our heir Aurora and her sister Oasis, managed to find the ball pit underneath Nina's and Micah's treehouse. Autumn's happiness was at its peak. She loved nothing more than to be surrounded Surrounded by her siblings, she complimented Edward, telling him how much she loved his new home and praised the party his family put together. And Shanna had no problem helping herself to Hilary's tea sandwiches. You all couldn't wait to be inside each other until later. Oasis was trying to get her shy cousin, Lila Volkov, to come out of her shell, greeting her with a hug and some giggles. Aurora joined the conversation, and from then on, it was just babbles after babbles. And as the family finished up their meals and desserts, Rangoon and her soulmate Zayden took a moment for themselves, knowing it was finally time to reveal the gender of their baby. They took some quick photos in front of the balloon arch and shared many kisses before Hillary gathered everyone in front of the arch to watch. And poor, poor Dexter Kibo felt like he was about to have an anxiety attack. But neither Razinette nor Zayden were worried about that. All they were thinking about was if the balloon would reveal pink or blue powder. It's a boy. Relay Race Volkov and Zayden Kibo are having a son. Both of their hearts were filled with joy. It was now time for the happy parents to open their gifts. But first, Repugnance needed to use the bathroom. And as he saw her walking by her lonesome into the house and up the stairs, Dexter found an opportunity to strike. Ranch Hand could hear that she was being followed, and could instantly guess who she was being followed by, but she wasn't expecting what he had to say. Dexter comes back from work two nights ago to find his brother Zayden the happiest he's ever seen him. Zayden then tells him that he's having a baby with red bottoms. But what Zayden doesn't know is that the two of them had an affair and woohooed twice, so Dexter had a question for Relinquish. Is that his baby that she was carrying inside her womb? 
Rolex told Dexter to not be so ridiculous, of course it wasn't his baby, and Dexter wanted to know how she knew that. Had she taken a paternity test? Of course not, because then Zayden would know that she cheated on him. So then how the hell would she know if it's not his baby? Dexter yelled. How does she know if that isn't his son she's carrying? Riesling said that she knew she was carrying Zayden's child because she could feel it in her bones. Dexter told her that that wasn't a good enough answer, but she didn't expect him to understand. And just as she was about to find herself a different bathroom, Dexter told her that she better hope, for her sake, that the baby doesn't come out blacker than Zayden. Oh. Hey Father Winter, you're missing the show. That comment robbed Renter's insurance the wrong way, so she pulled him into the bathroom to continue speaking with him. What the fuck was wrong with him? Even if the baby was his, she's giving him a free pass from fatherhood. Why does he want to be a father to this baby so damn badly? Dexter exclaimed that it was because he cares. He actually cares to be a father to his kid, and, unlike his brother, he actually cares about her. Zayden only proposed to her because he thinks he knocked her up. When will she fucking get it? Dexter can't let go of referee. He just can't. They have a real connection. And he knows she knows it too. He will never understand why she keeps going back to his brother. And this baby boy. He just wants to know if he's his. Again, Red Rum told him that it wasn't. So, Dexter asked her to make a promise to him, since she's so sure that it wasn't his son that she was carrying. He made her promise that if it does end up being his child, she would give the two of them being together a chance. He would make her happy, actually happy. And since Radium was so sure that her son was Zayden's, she made him that promise. She also found herself for some reason moved by what he said. Cue the circus music bitch, because getting wicked with your fiance's brother during your baby shower while your entire family is downstairs is some fucking clownery. And as Zayden searched the entire home for Remy Ma so they could start opening their gifts, Dexter began to freak out because he knew he and Reinforced Steel had fucked up real bad. He induced her into labor. Dexter booked it before anyone could see the two of them alone together, just in time for Zayden to find Raina Thorpe and realize what was going on. The Kilahas, Kibos, and the generation to Volkov children, Sans Clint, went with Radisson Hotel and Zayden to the hospital to endure the long haul of waiting for their son to be born. Shanna was hyping Zayden up. She couldn't believe her baby brother was about to become a father. She was so excited for him. Dexter was still freaking out as Sage juggled in the middle of the hospital hallway. Where is the decorum? All of the families were chatting about the party and spilling the details about their personal lives while Zayden comforted his fiancée in the hospital suite. It was all becoming so real. In just a few hours, he would be a dad, and soon, he and Radio by Lana Del Rey would be married. Autumn supported her baby sister as she got her epidural shot and had her dilation checked. She was only two centimeters dilated and had a long way to go, but she felt better after the epidural. And knowing that her soulmate Zayden wouldn't leave her side, 
Our heir took a much needed nap while Shanna made jokes with her brothers and the Gen to kids caught up with Christopher. Shanna then magically poofed an entire roast chicken for the family to share while they wait. And once the twins were wide awake, Sage got back to showing off his juggling skills. Zayden gave revolt against the capital a back massage on the yoga ball to help ease her pain. And while doing so, he pitched a baby name to his fiancé. He would like to name their son Akira after his deceased father, Radio Shack loved it. Anything that makes her soulmate happy makes her happy. And while Dexter got to know his nieces Aurora and Oasis better, Autumn heard an unexpected sound come from her daughter Oasis. <laughs> Her worst nightmare just came true. Her daughter Oasis is a werewolf. She thought she was a human like her. Why hadn't Chris or racially motivated told her? And speaking of Chris, there was something that her siblings needed to know about him. Something that will explain why Clint is nowhere to be found. They went into rage rooms birthing sweet and Autumn did not hold back. According to Clint, their mother Alexis murdered his entire biological family in cold blood. And Chris admitted that he knew about it. That's why Clint isn't here right now. After he found out, he left their home and she hasn't seen him since. And she is very worried about him. She's barely spoken to Chris since that night. It's been killing her. He won't tell what he knows about the murders. He's still protecting Alexis. Edward was wondering why he hadn't heard from Clint in a while. The two would always call each other. They were practically best friends growing up and that never changed. Autumn didn't know what to do. Clint won't pick up the phone. She has no idea where he went or how he even found out about his parents. She hasn't seen any updates about him in the tabloids. She's worried sick and Chris holding back the truth is not helping. Perhaps they could be more persuasive. Sage. Where the fuck did your hair go? Autumn lured Christopher inside the birthing suite and let him have it. All the kids were ganging up on him. What did mom do? Why did she do it? Did he have anything to do with it? Why was he still protecting Alexis when she is dead? Chris couldn't believe Autumn told Ezra, Edward, and Nicole he was ambushed with no opportunity to defend himself. But even after seeing all of his children yearn for answers and worry about their brother Clint, Christopher still wouldn't tell them anything about what Alexis did to Clint's family. It's a promise he made to her that he intended to keep, and that's that. All of the kids were so disappointed in their father, and, for the first time, they viewed him differently as well. But their fight was going to have to wait. It was time for Red Wine to meet her son. She headed with the doctor and Zayden into the birthing suite, onto the chair, and carefully listened to her doctor's instructions as she began to push. And after what seemed like forever, her healthy baby boy had finally arrived into the world and into her arms. She was in love. He was absolutely perfect. But, the more she looked at him, the more she realized that something was off. And it seemed like Zayden was a bit overwhelmed with witnessing the rawness of childbirth. And that's when the new mother began to panic. It had been several days since Root Beer gave birth, and she hadn't allowed Zayden to come over and see the baby. He decided to go over anyways. Hey, hey. Hello, Fliff. 